I'm going to talk a little bit today about scale insect. Not many people understand what scale is. So if you come close, I will show you what scale. This is a Japanese yew, Taxus cuspidata, which came from Japan. It's a 200 year old tree. Look at it, it's so old. And if I just brush it, you see the white stuff falling out like dandruff. If you come close, look at these branches all covered with that white. It's like dandruff. And this is a type of scale that infects Japanese yews. They don't seem to host on English yew, but Japanese yew are particularly prone to this. So this whole tree is covered with that. So what I will do is I can spray it. You can get one of these proprietary sprays. I'm not going to show the brand, but you can buy them in garden centers. They're already mixed sprays and just spray it with that and it should deal with it. Different types of sprays have different efficacy or different strengths. So you've got to be quite persistent in doing it. If at first it doesn't work, then you've got to keep doing it again. Again, if you look at this, the whole tree is covered. All the branches have got it. So one has to just keep looking around. So on a large nursery like this, you've got to be ever so careful because if you don't watch it, that can spread to other plants. We also have other chemicals. These are commercial chemicals which we use. And this we use for our delgids and other insect pests. And you can also use a spray like this. You can have a little pump up thing and then spray it with that. Make sure you mix the strength of the chemical correctly. Nowadays, I don't think there are many chemicals that you buy that you have to mix. It's only the commercial ones that you have to mix. I'm now going to show you a customer's tree. If you follow me. We have customers who leave their trees with us and they left it with us because this particular yew is a beautiful uh, Japanese yew. If you come close, you'll see the leaves. There are many types of Japanese yew. The one I showed you has large leaves, but this one has got the very tiny leaves. It's almost like a Picea. And this is what they call the Yatsubusa type. So if you look at it again closely, I have had this for 18 weeks or 20 weeks and this tree was covered in scale. I got rid of most of the scale, but you can still see that there's still scale around. And because this is a customer's tree and they want to have this tree back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a toothbrush and with the toothbrush, I'm going to try and take most of this off with the toothbrush. A tedious task but at least you get the bulk of it off if it is your own tree I think most amateurs if they have just a few trees they can deal with it easily but if you have hundreds of trees it's not so easy to go through hundred trees brushing every little twig for scale it does work because you can take off every single piece of scale that you can find on the tree. So what happens if you don't deal with the scale? The scale, as you know, is an insect like a delgids. And all these insect pests, they do a lot of harm and damage to the plants because they suck the sap and you don't want it sucking the sap. So I will literally go around and use, look at the scale on my hand. It sticks to the fingers as well. So this is what I have to do. Every single twig and branch. See, they always hide on the underside of the leaves. And then after that, I will take a jet of water and jet the whole thing off. 
So this is how you deal with scale. You can even use a bit of detergent. Detergent doesn't really hurt the plants. You know, any of the washing up liquids is fine. Literally go through every single twig and scrub it. And then after that, spray again with a chemical, one of these insecticides, just to make sure that all the eggs or whatever don't persist. So that is how you deal with insect pests. I would also mention that junipers are very prone to scales. You've got to deal with junipers in the same way. This is also a customer's tree, but this juniper is completely clear. This never had scale. So one has to keep watching the plants to make sure they don't suffer from scale. So I hope you've learned a little bit about this. So always check the plants to make sure that they don't get infested by scale. While I have the camera on, I will just walk you through some of the plants. I'm going to do a separate video about the yellowing of the pine needles. And the Japanese white pine or the five needle pine is notorious for having the autumn needles turn yellow like this. As I've always said, ever since I ran the nursery 37 years ago. In the autumn, this is almost the third week in September. From September onwards, I get phone calls, you won't believe it, about three to 10 phone calls a day, saying my white pine is turning yellow, is the tree dying? No, it's not dying. At this time of the year, in the autumn time, all the five needle pines lose the needles. So when you see yellow needles like this, for goodness sake, please don't think that the pine is dying. They're just shedding their needles. If you go into the forest floor of any pine forest, what do you find on the floor but pine needles? So pine needles is a normal occurrence. You see, the needles are at the bottom of the shoots. That means they are the old needles. The new needles are fine. The current year's needles or two year needles are fine. Usually it's the second or possibly the third year needles, certainly the third year needles which are shed. So you just got to clean it and the whole thing should be okay. The Scots pines don't seem to suffer that much. This is only Scots pine. They do get a few yellow needles, but certainly not as many as you would find on the Japanese five needle pine or white pine. So while we're here again, let's look through, look at my Tried maples turning lovely autumn color. They are only troubled by, I would say, the aphids in the spring. But apart from that, they don't suffer much. This is cedar of Lebanon. They are fairly trouble-free. Don't, they don't seem to get many pests. Korean hornbeam also don't suffer from many pests. European hornbeam certainly don't have many pests. Again, this is a mighty old white pine, which I'm still working on. And this one, again, look at the yellow needles. They have to be cleaned. And if we look closely, okay, it doesn't seem to have a delgids, but a delgids is quite common on all the pines, especially Japanese white pine. Now, this is a Scots pine, a large Scots pine. Again, all these old needles. This is what we have to clean off. I'm now going to show you some other junipers that I have. These are not young. I've had them about 10 years here. They are junipers that I'm training on. It's some other form of juniper. I was told that it could be a type of Sabina juniper. And if you look closely, it is riddled with scale. So as I say, Scale is what we call endemic. Certain plants are prone to this insect pest. So this one is covered in uh, this scale inside, juniper scale. So I'll have to spray these very uh, heavily to get rid of the pests. All of them are suffering. See, they're all covered in scale. All covered in scale. So this is juniper scale. But it's only this variety that catches it. I don't know why. Other varieties are completely free of this problem. So do watch out for pests because they can damage the plant. 
and you have to take care of it. It's all part of the care of bonsai. Uh, 